Episode 198, Leading from Within, with Meg Tilton. Welcome to Latter Day Life Coaches, the podcast where each episode is a conversation between me, Heather Rackham, and one of my amazing coach colleagues. Each coach here is a member of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter Day Saints and a highly trained, experienced life coach making a great impact in the lives of their clients. And together, we have one main goal, helping you live your best life no matter what. You ready for this conversation with the coach? Here we go. In this episode, Meg Tilton, an internal leadership and emotions coach, joins us to discuss the power of internal leadership and how it shapes our ability to lead others. Meg shares her journey of discovering her true calling and the importance of aligning with our inner purpose. We expose the concept of internal leadership, emphasizing the need to lead our thoughts, emotions, and experiences from within. Meg provides insights into how spiritual creation precedes physical manifestation and why developing internal leadership is essential to becoming a positive influence in our lives and our communities. Tune in to learn how to embrace your unique role, access the power within, and lead yourself to greater fulfillment and impact. Enjoy this episode. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to the podcast today. If you're new here, we're so happy to have you. If you are returning, thank you for being here. I am joined today by Coach Meg Tilton, who quite literally this podcast would not exist without Meg. So I love when I get a chance to have her here. But Meg, who is the podcast producer, I should say, and also a life coach, will you introduce yourself again for us here because Meg's been on before. So give us an introduction, Meg. Yes, I have been on before. So I'm Meg Tilton. I certified at the same time as Heather and I am an internal leadership and emotions coach for LDS Christian women. And I just love what I do. It is super fun. (laughs) I finally feel like I've dialed in on my niche. I've kind of been all over the place and I finally feel like This is the one that's been out there that has been trying to tell me like, no, no, this is what you're supposed to do. And I finally just took the, took the plunge and have gone kind of all in on it and I'm loving it. So. Isn't it amazing what happens when you feel like you just, when you dial it in, when you kind of like, we might call it find the flow, right? Like there is just something that feels like you are finally in the groove. And it's not like it felt bad before, but it's just, it feels amazing now. Yes. Yes, it does. It feels very settling to me. Mm -hmm. It's like coming home. That's how I describe it. It's like, you've Mm -hmm. come home. Oh, like, yeah. Yeah. Like this is what it was supposed to be all along. And I just had to pick up the different tools and learn a couple of different modalities in terms of how to coach people through it. And now I feel like I have something really great to offer my clients. So yeah. Love it. Yeah. I love I and I love when I see that happen because I know how much people need people, right? And so mm-hmm. there's people who have been, whether they've known it or not, have been waiting for Meg to figure this out so that they can get the help that you can offer. And I, I truly believe that that's the same for every single person on this earth. There are people who are just waiting for us to get everything lined up so that we can show up in a way that our heavenly father and our heavenly mother intend for us to be. And yeah. And they need, you know, and there's just people waiting and I love it. Yeah. Yeah. It really is just getting over our own, insecurities and things because we think, oh, this person is telling me that this is how I should do it. So for example, we both certified at the life coach school that has the model. And I think that's a great tool, but I don't think it's the only tool. And intellectually for so long, I could understand what the model was teaching, but it didn't really deeply resonate with me until I brought in some emotional tools and really learned how to deal with my emotions on a very personal and intimate level that finally now I'm like, oh, now I can use the model. Maybe not exactly how it was taught to me, but in a way that makes more sense to me and ideally will make sense to my clients as well. So it it is just finding pieces and it's like creating that puzzle 
and, Mm -hmm. and you find it. And then when you complete that puzzle and it's never really complete because you keep finding more things, but it almost takes like that one final puzzle piece before you can feel like, oh, like now I can do this. Right. And then not too long after you'll tear that puzzle apart and you'll build another one, but I know (laughs) (laughs) it's so good. Okay. Well, you, um, internal leadership is, I, is what you said, right? Like um, internal leadership. So we often hear about leadership from an external perspective, right? Mm -hmm. But today we're going to shift our focus to inward is, is what you, how you described it in internal leadership. In our last conversation, we discussed what it means to be a powerful woman leader in the church, Mm-hmm. which is, was such a good conversation. If you haven't listened to that one, go back and listen to it. But uh, now I think today we want to explore a little bit, the concept of internal leadership, what that looks like. How would you define internal leadership and how does it influence the kind of leader we become in that external world? Does that make sense? Yeah, totally. So yeah, last time I talked about leadership of women in the church, because I think that that is kind of a a buzz topic right now. I think it's something that a lot of people are focusing on is the role of women in the church. And I really do think that to be a good external leader, you have to be a really good internal leader of all of your emotions, all of your thoughts, all of your experiences. Because when you are, when you are in control of those, then that will automatically project itself out into the world and how you show up with other people. I think that if you're familiar with the church and women in the church, we can all look to certain women and think, wow, that is a woman who really has a clear identity of who she is and a clear identity of all all of her thoughts, feelings, emotions, and has leadership internally. Like, I mean, Sherry Dew is the one that I'm always thinking of. She just seems so grounded, so in tune with herself and her purpose and what she is meant to do on this earth and the experiences that she has and what they mean for her. She leads so well internally. I feel like that then that exudes out into the world and we all gravitate towards that, yeah. right? Because and, and honestly, though, really quick, I don't think people, most people wouldn't be able to know that that's what it is about her that right. is that draws them to them. They wouldn't be like, oh, she just really knows how to manage her emotions. And they, that's the thing that But when we put words to it and we describe that, that's actually what it is. That yeah. internal leadership is what people are being drawn to. So I love that you bring that to light. Like it's not, there are certain things that make somebody stand out like that. Yeah. And so many, so many of us might look at Sherry do and say, Oh, I can never be like her. Mm -hmm. There's just something about her that she's different. And I get what they're saying, but at the same time, I'm like, you can be like her because you can learn to have that same kind of internal leadership. Now, you're not going to be Sherry Do, right? You're going to have different likes, different things that you're interested in and be focused on something different than maybe she is. She's very focused on teaching the gospel and, you know, being a disciple of Jesus Christ in her work, you know, like that's kind of who she is. So yes, you might not be the Sherry Do who's whatever, I think she's like the CEO of Deseret Book, right? Mm-hmm. And be this public speaker, but in whatever realm you show up in, in your life, you can be like her. You can be like Sherry Do because you can have that internal leadership for yourself and then show up in that way in your life. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think it is hard to think of ourselves as a leader. I was doing an interview with Kurt Frankham and he said, well, you're kind of a self-appointed leader of the community that you've created. And that felt a little awkward to me when he said that it felt a little bit ostentatious, maybe like, oh, have I done that? Like, so sometimes we can put like a negative spin to that. Like if, if we think, oh, we've just made ourselves a leader anyway, I just, I, I think we have to understand what that means, like what being a leader means and, and who or what we are leading. Right. And yeah, 
And I think your I think your response is actually pretty normal within the church because we get callings, mm-hmm. right? And some are considered quote unquote leadership callings. So we think, oh, I'm not a leader until I am in a certain position, like a Relief Society president right. or a primary president or a young women's president. Or, or somebody else has appointed me, right? Like we think somebody right. needs to appoint us to be a leader. We can't right. appoint ourselves to be a leader. Right. But you can be a leader in any position that you're in, mm-hmm. right? And I think that that really manifests itself. And I think a lot of times what you will probably see is that People get called to certain callings, not because they um, are being asked to be a leader all of a sudden, but because they've already been a leader and it just makes sense to put them into that position sometimes. That's not always the case, but you know, you can lead just as much as the primary chorister as you can as the Relief Society president. You have just as much leadership ability as even the um, bulletin coordinator, like our, we just got a new bulletin coordinator, but the old one, he had leadership qualities where he would write these beautiful emails and, and really share what he was feeling and what he learned in these emails every week that he sent out the bulletin. And people would say, oh, that's just not really a calling that's going to be leading. But I'm like, but he led me, he, he directed me, he taught me things. He guided me in as a bulletin person. Mm -hmm. You know, so it's not the calling, it's not the role, it's what you think about yourself and how you decide to present yourself to the world in whatever role you are in. Yeah. And and I like and appreciate this conversation because oftentimes I think people think, maybe not, not all people, but there are some people who will like aspire to be in a leadership calling which I don't know why, but that's like one of the things, right? So <laughs> there are some people who aspire to that. And this isn't a conversation of like, learn to be a leader so you can be called as a leader, right? right? No. This is a conversation that is that is like, be a leader because we all want to have positive influence on the world. Our heavenly parents want us to be positive influence in the world Mm -hmm. and be the type of person who knows how to do that internally so that other people can be influenced for better because of you. Yeah. And when you learn to lead internally, no matter where you're showing up, it's going to be a much different energy than if you're looking to a role outside of you to determine if you're a leader instead of deciding I'm a leader of myself, which means I can put myself in any situation and know that I will lead myself and whoever else might need some help being led Mm -hmm. in the right way, Mm -hmm. right? We don't have to fear where we're put. Yeah, that's very well stated. So I would say, like listening to you, that leading ourselves effectively then starts with understanding who or what you are leading right? So when it comes to internal leadership, what are the key elements you would say um, within ourselves that we need to guide or learn to manage? Yeah. I mean, it really does come back to the model in many ways. It comes back to leading our thoughts correctly, leading our emotions correctly, and leading any other aspect of us that is in our internal world that really makes up who we are at our essence. And really that's what external leadership is too. You think you're leading people, but you're really leading their thoughts and their emotions too. Mm -hmm. So once you can tap into what are my thoughts and what are my emotions and what do they need from my spirit? Because I believe that we have a spirit and then we have a body. The body has all these emotions and feelings and thoughts and it needs leadership from the spirit. Right. And that's where we get divine help is through the Holy Ghost to our spirit to help us know how to do that in the best way possible. But that's really what it comes down to is when we are leading our emotions and our thoughts in a really high at a really high level, then we're able to do that for other people and their thoughts and their emotions too. Yeah. It's like people are, whether we know it or not, we kind of help people manage what I there's what's the word I'm looking for like 
people mirror what mm-hmm. they what they are around. So like we actually co-regulate off of other people way more than we think we do. And mm-hmm. when we are that person that is able to regulate ourselves, we are able to help other people regulate and manage themselves in a way that it just influences other people in in that way. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So I'm going to quote some scripture here. <laughs> Moses 3, 5, it says, for I, the Lord God created all things of which I have spoken spiritually before they were naturally upon the face of the earth, which is one of my favorite scriptures, by the way. Mm-hmm. How do you see this principle of spiritual creation applying to internal leadership? And how can we first lead ourselves spiritually before it manifests itself outwardly? Well, yeah, it goes back to what I just said, right? I think real internal leadership is done through our spirits that is divinely connected to our heavenly parents. Mm -hmm. And so that we were created spiritually first. We were created as beings and then we were put into this body. And the body is really looking for leadership from the spirit. So if we want a physical manifestation of leadership internally, it has to happen on a spiritual level first, where our spirit is leading the body internally. And then that goes outside of us, right? Again, yeah. going back to Sherry Dew, she seems so grounded and so in tune with who she is that I think any of us would say, oh, I could drop her in any situation, in any meeting, and she's going to show up in a really great way because she has, she's created that spiritual leadership first internally. Mm -hmm. She's not looking outside of herself for that. So there's just something very powerful about that and realizing that, that you can create that ahead of time and not wait for something outside of you to force you to create it. Yeah. I mean, I have noticed in my own life when I I'm taking the time to like the night before journal before I go to bed and, and kind of write down some of the things that I achieved or accomplished or am thankful for during the day. And then I intentionally say, and this is what I want to have happen. This is who I want to be tomorrow. Mm -hmm. My days are different. And it's because I have taken the opportunity I'm coming to see to create it ahead of time. Like we have to create things ahead of time. And I've, I've largely depended upon the scripture in that process in knowing that I'm going to create something spiritually before it's manifested physically. And I just know like, and, and you and I talked before this conversation, how like my summer just kind of felt like a spiral. It didn't feel right. And I know in large part, it was because I wasn't taking the time in my evenings. I was just out of schedule. So I wasn't taking the time to create my days ahead of time. It's it's pretty amazing what happens when we do that. Yeah. And I don't know if I've talked about this before, but I really do that one of the aspects that I love of the of the savior that we can learn about is and it's a term we use in coaching called the future self, mm-hmm. right? And so it's basically like if we want to be a certain way, we have to start living that way before we actually become that. Mm-hmm. And the Savior declared himself the Savior before he ever atoned for anybody. So the atonement was created spiritually before it was ever physically done. But it had to be a physical act right? It was a physical act, but it was preempted by a spiritual creation. And that creation was really in his belief of who he was and what his purpose was and what he wanted to and needed to accomplish in order to live into who he was. But he was already living that. Like he's already like, I'm the savior of the world, right? But he hadn't saved anybody, right? Nobody had been saved. He hadn't atoned for anything yet, but he had said it like it was as good as done. So he created that atonement spiritually ahead of time in how he thought about it. That is like, part of me is like speechless. Like, what do I, like, what do you say? There's no response to that other than amen, (laughs) right? Right. (laughs) Like that is so true and so well-spoken and something that we don't, we never really, we don't really bring light to that. We don't talk about that. Mm -hmm. Thank you for sharing that. And I think as- 
Yeah, go ahead. Well, I was going to say, I think, you know, in the church, we talk about making it to the celestial kingdom or being celestial beings that live with God. How much different would our life be if we're like, I'm already that person. It's already been created spiritually. It's already a possibility. We know this because he's like, this is what it's going to be. So how would you live your life differently now if you believe that about yourself? Like you need to create that spiritually right now within yourself before it actually becomes an actual thing. Yeah. Have you read Adam Miller's living? Is it living a, an, an early resurrection? That's what it's called. Have I don't read that so. book. No. It is so good. It's about basically what you just said, that if we would live now, like we've already been resurrected. And, and we should be because basically we all have been, we've been baptized and we've been brought forth, right? <laughs> so we've all been resurrected to some degree. Our lives would be so different if we just already lived from that place. Anyway, it's a really good book. We should link to it in the show notes. Um, okay. So people who are listening. I'll can do that for you. Do that. But yeah, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, it, it just is, it's just speaks to that point really well. It was kind of a life changer for me when I read that. So, um, just to give some people some examples, what, how would you describe someone who struggles with in, like, how would they feel people who are struggling with internal leadership compared to someone who lead themselves, who leads themselves well? Is that, yeah. Yeah. Would you, what would you, can you describe that? Yeah. So I actually had a client recently who described it perfectly. She says, I feel like I'm fighting myself. And I'm like, hmm, that is very powerful imagery, right? To think like I'm, I have this internal battle that I'm fighting against myself instead of having hearts, emotions, thoughts, and feelings that are being led. I want you to think about how that feels different than somebody trying to like, no, you're going to do this. And they're like, no, I don't want to. And they're like, there's this internal battle instead of, I'm going to lead you and show you how to do this. I'm going to listen to your concerns and your fears and your whatever is coming up, roadblocks for you that are coming up. And we're going to have this collaboration. And then I'm going to lead you in the direction that we want to go. I was also working with this client recently. And I said, you know, when you are not leading internally and not leading your emotions, it's like being in a room full of kindergartners who are all running around screaming. And instead of standing there and being calm and saying, okay, I hear you and pulling them out one by one and really listening to what those kindergartners need, you as the teacher are in the fray running and screaming around too, right? Like it's just utter chaos. So (laughs) so that there's like this internal battle. And so when you feel like I my emotions or my thoughts may be a little bit out of control, but that's okay. I can listen to them. I can understand them. I can really try and see why they're here, why they're showing up, what they need me to understand. And then to together we can collabor- collaboratively come up with a better solution than this utter chaos. But often unled, when we're unled internally, we're joining the fray right? Where our spirits are like, yeah, this really is terrible. I can't believe this. Oh my gosh, what are we going to do? And they get caught up. The spirit gets caught up in all of the emotions and thoughts as well. I really appreciate that imagery. I feel like I just spent my whole entire summer <laughs> living that image. Living in, in a, kindergarten, in a yes. Kind of kindergartner room. Yes. <laughs> And you know what pulled me out of it? And I think this really relates, is really relatable here. We were, we had a a call that we were doing amongst some of the coaches and Glenn Lovelace, um, he's a coach listed here on the directory, made the comment of like, he, to somebody else, but this just goes to show that watching other people be coached can be just as influential in our lives, right? Mm -hmm. He just said, do you think that you're being led to do this or are you just living smaller than you actually could be like, are you like, are you just living small and not choosing to live big? Mm -hmm. And I was like, that's the struggle that's inside of me right now. There's a part of me that just doesn't want to like be big. Like I just kind of want to be small and not, Mm -hmm. um, but our souls really want to live big. And Mm -hmm. it is a constant battle between let's just hide and do the easy thing, or let's like Mm -hmm. be the leader and be, and do something big. 
Yeah. I mean, the, the spirit is constantly overcoming that motivational triad, right? Yeah. Of the body wanting to exert the least amount of energy, yep. <laughs> have pleasure and have no pain, right? Yep. So oh yeah, it's constantly wanting that to do battle. that. <laughs> I am the queen of that battle. Yeah. But I think too, I think we can give maybe, we can act like, oh, the body is the one that's against me, where the body really isn't. I've really come to love the body because the body has very a very specific role. And in the end, when the body is well led by the spirit, it wants the success of us as well. Mm -hmm. It really does. But left unled, it's going to go back to the denominator of least amount of energy, no pain, right, and pleasure, right? Well, it's it just really gives us like it's the only indicator we have of something that's a little bit out of line, and so mm -hmm. and something that we need to overcome in order to take it to the next level, right? We we mm -hmm. can learn to recognize that when I'm feeling uncomfortable in this situation, which is what our body, you know, like we feel that we can't feel that without our physical body, that discomfort. Mm -hmm. Without that, we don't know what we, we have to overcome that in order to go to, to continue to progress. We have to have those indicators. Yes, for sure. The client that I've been working with recently, she really came to a point that I came to personally where it's like, I have this internal battle and we usually tolerate it for a certain amount of time because it's, while it's chaotic, it's familiar. <laughs> Mm -hmm. And it's a pattern and we know the pattern, even though the pattern might be painful and not productive, the brain likes patterns, but it finally comes to a point where the spirit's like, I can't do this anymore. So it's kind of like a kindergartner teacher finally yelling and being like, everybody be quiet. Like, I can't do this anymore, you know? <laughs> and, and we get to that point and that's a good point to get to actually, because mm -hmm. then it means like, okay, now I'm going to take action to make things different. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. And that I think is where I got to this summer. Yeah. <laughs> Probably that kindergarten teacher with maybe a few swear words sprinkled in at myself. <laughs> oh, of course. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh, Meg, I am so proud of you, first of all, because you've been saying for a long time that you are going to launch a podcast. And you're the queen of like podcast producing. So I'm so glad that you are finally doing this for yourself. Yep. Share with the people, share us, share it with us. What's yeah, happening. So my podcast is finally live and it's called accessing the power within. And it's a little bit different of a format. I tend to be kind of a happy person and pretty jovial. This podcast is a little bit more serious, I guess I would say. But that's just a side of me. And it's pretty curated. It's very um, scripted. And I use it. I'm using my own life experiences to try and teach these tools, like things that I have gone through, things that have happened to me and my own struggle to teach the listeners what that was like and how to how to change it and how I changed in that process, in the process. So it's something I'm really, really proud of. It's been pushed me a little bit outside of my comfort zone, but that's a good thing. And yeah. I kind of fought it for a while. Like, I don't know if this is the right thing, but it is the right thing. And so it's something that I really enjoy producing and putting out there. So it's live. Yay. You can go find I'm it. so <laughs> glad because we need that. There's people who need that. I need that. So thank you. Thank you for winning yeah. the, the battle in your head yeah. <laughs> and doing yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. So. Oh, Meg, thank you. This has actually been a conversation that I personally really needed and, and appreciate the opportunity for me to just kind of regroup internally. And, and I know that there are people listening who will experience the same thing. So thank you. Yeah. Well, um, thanks for having me. Before we go, where can people connect with you? Aside from listening to your podcast, how yes. else can they find you? So you can find me at Meg Tilton coaching, um, dot com. My website was just redone by the awesome Jenny Lakenin. So it's beautiful. It's something I'm also very proud of. Um, you can connect with me there and I'm on Instagram at Meg Tilton coaching. So. Awesome. Thank you, Meg. Yeah. We'll link to all the, well, I should say Meg will link to all those things yes, in the show we'll notes. Link to it all. <laughs> 
<laughs> thank you for being here, everyone. And thank you, Meg, especially. And we will mm -hmm. see you all again next time. Hey, we just wanted to thank you for spending part of your day here with us at Latter-day Life Coaches and being part of this conversation. Share this with your friends so that you can have a conversation with them on this topic as well. And as always, subscribe so you don't miss a single episode. Have a good one, my friends.